as a team we came together with um, lots of therapies and multidisciplinary people. We really had to pull all that together and use everybody's skills um, to be able to assess the, the patients from a point of view of quality of life, to be able to come together as a multidisciplinary team and discuss patient needs and really try and make it patient focused so that, that the patients can set their own goals and what's important to them. The whole thing that's led to this is the, the realisation that more patients are surviving in intensive care and the more that survive, the more we realise that it's not just okay to say they've made it. We have to look at what state they've made it in. A lot of these patients who've been on intensive care for a long time and have been very sick, their whole lives have changed afterwards. The RACI service kind of reflects that in several different ways. Immediately it's to kind of support those individuals with a multidisciplinary team, but they're being supported by people who understand what they've gone through on ITU. It's kind of looking at a few patients, but in a lot of detail and hopefully helping them out in a, in a major way. I think we're making a big, big difference. Within 72 hours of them being admitted, we have various screening tools that we do, which look for risks of PICS, which is post ITU syndrome, and that's um, looking at physical, emotional, respiratory, nutrition, um, swallowing. We look at the ho hope, hopefully everything, and identify points that are going to need additional support in that recovery journey. And from that, we have a weekly meeting with all the team and work together to ensure that the, the right people are involved at the right stages of the journey to make a meaningful recovery and something which feels like a life that's been worth surviving for. So my role within the team is to assess patients on ITU, um, help with their transition to the ward. When patients are in ITU, if they've been ventilated for greater than three days, they have a patient diary started on them, just to fill in the, the blanks that they won't remember the, the memory losses. So this is the patient diary that is appropriate. Give that diary back to those patients and discuss their ITU experience, just to help them to come to terms with it. We also produced a rehabilitation manual um, with, between the team which has got lots of useful information for the patients and we we'll go through that as well on the ward with the patients and, and offer them support where we can. One of the good things about being a RACI physiotherapist is that I have a lot of more time to be able to spend with the patient so that I can do a lot more intense rehabilitation with those individuals. I'll start their rehabilitation in the intensive care unit where we'll be trying to maintain their range of movement with those patients from ventilators, trying to optimise their respiratory function and work alongside our respiratory colleagues on intensive care. Once a patient's left intensive care, we take over a lot of their rehabilitation and work alongside our ward physiotherapist as well to help meet the patient's goals. So we like to take our patients multiple times a week down to a rehab gym. When the patients are medically fit to leave the acute site, if the patient isn't safe to go home, we'll direct the patient to one of our community hospitals. Once patients have gone home, we'll follow the patients up with a three week and a six week phone call. In these phone calls, we like to see how the patients are progressing at all and to see if there's anything that we can do to provide enhanced rehab, either over the phone or sign posts into other services. People say, you know, what is it you do? And I'm like, well, sometimes I'm a physio assistant and sometimes I'm a speech assistant, but the patients tend to, be dis to describe me as their hospital friend. When I go out to see a patient, I'll find out what they want to do. What is it that they've suddenly realised they're struggling with and they want a bit of help with? One of our most favourite things is being able to take people outside. A huge time, if they're indoors, they might not even be seeing outside through a window. We also love it when all of us can work together. All of us in the gym, physio, speech and language, dietitians, and you can see how everyone's job plays a part in that rehab journey. We're all there just really to make the patient's journey as nice as we possibly can. Pre-RACI uh, speech and language therapy had really little input into ITU. So we're trying to pick high-risk patients up who may have swallowing, communication or voice difficulties as a result of either the reason for their admission or maybe some of the critical care inter interventions that have, have been done to them. One of the most uh, difficult things about being in critical care can be not being able to communicate because of some of the interventions we do. It might mean patients don't have a voice and aren't able to get their point across. So early intervention to support that 
can really reduce distress for patients. We can give early intervention to try and rehab the swallow, the voice, provide communication therapy with the aim of giving them earlier voicing, better outcomes overall, post-discharge from hospital and a better quality of life by the time they get home. So for example with swallowing it might be that they can have a, a more normal diet sooner than and if we weren't involved because of the rehab that they've had. Because we're moving with them as a team from ITU onto the wards and then following them up in community, whether that be us directly or handing over sort of management plans to the community team and making sure the referrals are into the right sections of the SALT team. I think patients are feeling very held through that process. It's really helping them feel more secure um, and, and understanding their own therapy journey. I'm trying to find out what I'm going to do with the patients, depending who I've got in, physio-wise, salt-wise and whatever else. Sarah from Speech and Language tends to give me little programmes to go through with the patients for the swallows, the speeches and little things like that, as well as the physios. Um, get patients up, get them moving, do exercises in bed, follow them up to the ward afterwards when they've left and carry on the same upstairs so they get a little bit of continuity from ITU up to the wards. Bring a dual perspective to the patients. They get the benefit of someone who can help them with their trauma in ITU but understands what that journey actually looks like. One of the big things that patients will, will have to deal with um, after being in ITU is, is maybe not be able to make sense of what was real and what wasn't real. I can work out from what, what they feel like is a hallucination. I can actually recognise this something that will have happened, it will have been a procedure or an intervention. That's helpful for them. I assess the patients at the bedside and there is a threshold which indicates that the patients are at risk of emotional distress even now or in the future. So when they hit that threshold, I'll go and see them. But then if they continue to have problems when they go home, they can come back and see me for outpatient counselling. So the nutritional rehab starts from their outset. We have goals that we put in place to try and make sure that we prevent muscle depletion, which is the, the common occurrence that happens with all of our ITU patients because they're not moving about like you and I do. We're feeding them, trying to meet their nutrition. So when they're able to communicate with us, we start working with them on a more personal level. Once they leave intensive care, they can often leave with still the feeding tube or the intravenous nutrition in place. So we're trying to focus a lot more on pushing our more complex nutrition support with these patients for a longer period of time than we might have in the past. I've done sessions with um, the physio and our therapy associate practitioner within the gym environment, explaining to the patient why nutrition is really important as part of their muscle strength and the muscle rebuilding, and then can sort of understand what we're trying to achieve with them within that therapy session of two of us working together with them. And that's part of the enhanced package that we provide. We then telephone our patients a month after they've been discharged to see how they're progressing. And then if they're still needing our support, we'll phone them another month later and then they'll hit the clinic. Sometimes my input would be to say, I'll speak to one of my consultant colleagues or refer a patient to a particular speciality. I um, run the three month face-to-face -face clinics when the patients come back and we just basically go through everything, the kind of physical function, the psychological function, how they're doing, where they were, where they want to be. One of the big things that we're hoping to start up soon, which is kind of our next plan, is kind of groups, patient groups. And then at each point, you know, there'll be someone who's maybe just left hospital and they'll meet someone who's a year down the line and they'll be able to see progress that can be made. Whereas if you just come out of hospital, it's very difficult to, to see what the world looks like because you are very different if you've been that, that unwell. Hopefully, groups and peer support will help that as well as us. So that's our kind of next step.